Ba -ba -da -ba. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Everything Club. <laughs> wow, that was a perfect jingle, George. What a great introduction. <laughs> that, that was great. <laughs> No, thank you guys. Thank you guys. So, what what are we doing here today? Uh, well, uh, let's just let's just go ahead and let our gracious listeners know um, what this what this even is. You know, this is a this is a podcast. You know, for your listening pleasure. Just three guys goofing around. Oh, I just realized I should probably take off my four silver rings that are clacking around every time I make a hand gesture. Um, yeah, let me let me <laughs> set those aside. Um, <laughs> anyways, we uh, we just uh, spent the last like. 12 13 minutes trying to decide on a jingle for the start of this and then george just george just stepped up to the plate and you know knocked it out of the park so so now we're now we're rocking and rolling this is the everything club folks and uh this is where you can come to get your daily dose or weekly dose or however we decide to spread these out intermittently dose of of everything you know what is what do you, what do we mean by that noah god uh <laughs> I didn't read this. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> All right, so I mean, we we could talk about everything, you know, movies, TV shows, books and comics, songs and albums, franchises, characters, artists and creators, uh, ge even genres and mediums. Wow. Right? It can be anything. That's a broad spectrum. This this I mean, this sounds really interesting. I think that a lot of people should 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 tune in and, and, and listen. <laughs> <laughs> For movies, music, books, and more, join Keelan, Noah, and George, your ultimate entertainment hub. Welcome to the Everything Club. So okay, so so let's back it up a little bit. Um, <laughs> this, that, this might have been be a, nice. a, a this might have been a rocky introduction. This is our first time doing this, folks. Uh, so we are three friends uh, from high school slash middle school slash elementary school. In the case of me and George, uh, so my name is Keelan Morrissey. I am a writer, director, filmmaker, uh, lover of stories and art, and uh, I have never done. A podcast. I've never done a strictly audio uh, production before. And this is something I'm excited about because, you know, not only is it a chance to explore a new medium, but it's a chance to just talk to my friends on a regular basis and to capture just the the essence of our conversations. Basically, you know, I'm sure a lot of people have been in this situation where you're talking with your friends and you're like, we're just we're a bunch of geniuses, you know, like the world needs to hear these private conversations. Like we're just we're just too smart and too funny for these to not be put out into the world in a serialized format <laughs> for the masses. And that's pretty much how we got here. <laughs> is that, is, is that how we got? Oh, geez. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Yeah. He's, you're absolutely right. That's exactly how we yeah. got we're also incredibly um, humble that's... about how funny we are. Exactly. We are probably the most humble podcast hosts you will ever <laughs> listen to. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so George, why don't you, uh, why don't you go on and introduce yourself? Absolutely. Hello, everybody. My name is George Mitriv. I am an engineer, an entrepreneur, and a researcher. Um, and I am here uh, pretty much for the exact reason as everybody else. Uh, I wanted a place that I could uh, chat with my friends, and I figure if anybody wants to listen in while we do that, uh, then then uh, you know what, uh, all good for everybody here. So, <laughs> all right, all right. And Noah, that's 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 you now, my man. All right, yeah, I'm Noah, uh, Noah Boink, if we're close. Um, I <laughs> don't have as many accolades as you guys do. Uh, I am an electrician who just recently graduated college uh, back in August of last year. And so far, things are going uh, great. Uh, but I am also here because, one, I love chatting with you fellas. And I know that we have some uh, conversations that we absolutely love and wish other people could tune in on because uh, we're just that funny. So. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad we finally have an outlet to get the people what they want and have our humor <laughs> out on display. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Beautifully said, Noah. Um, so, so now, once again, we're just going to let you guys <laughs> well know. You know, this podcast. You know, every podcast has a hook. It has an angle. It has a niche. And ours is everything. Literally everything. All right. It's in the name. <laughs> everything Club. Okay. So, <laughs> if you're if you're expecting. If you didn't pick up on that, yeah. 
<laughs> George just did the most like visible face palm. I wish everyone could have seen it. Um, <laughs> but yes, we we are talking about everything in the realm of uh, art, storytelling, and um, entertainment. Pretty much is so. So we'll you know we'll have some guests on here, uh, you know, talking about their projects and creations. But for the most part, we're just going to get on here and talk about. Uh, whatever the the newest and most interesting thing in the world of entertainment is, or we might even dive back into some things from the past, from our childhood. You know, talk about any any projects we find interesting. And today's topic, today's uh thing that's on the on the sandwich on the club sandwich of the day is either of you. Go ahead. <laughs> Avatar: The Last Airbender. <laughs> I realize you can't you can't see who I'm gesturing at when it's a Zoom. I guess I need to. Yeah, we don't know who you're talking to. I mean, I mean, neither neither can we when you just point at the camera. So I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's a pretty even playing field for everybody. I'd say. But yes, we are we we are talking about Avatar, uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender, uh, specifically the new Netflix adaptation of the original beloved cartoon. Uh, so now, folks, I think I think we've done enough goofing off uh, for our little intro segment today. Do we want to just dive on in to our first segment of the show? Before we do that, how are you guys doing? How's your life going? Pretty terrible. Anyways, so we're going to start the first segment of the show. Now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, I will I can give a quick update. Quick update. Um, ev- everything is going absolutely wonderfully. Um, things things are a little bit busy because uh because school is on the is is just starting to wrap up. But uh, everything um, everything's been fantastic, and um, I can't uh, I can't wait to to get into the get into the next uh to the next segment. Absolutely. Uh, for me, a uh, quick update on on my end. Uh, I'll let I'll let the listeners uh in on a little secret that i am developing my next film i was just talking to noah about this before we started recording and uh this is this is a film I'm, i've been excited about for a long time and it's a it's a it's a ghost film that george actually helped me brainstorm the initial concept for at a restaurant back in st louis and um don't have a title for it yet uh but it is essentially a a story that deconstructs the concept of what a ghost even is and it explores basically like when spiritual energy leaves a vessel like a human or a plant or an animal, where does it go? Why might it become a ghost? What are all the different forms that a ghost can take? And so like these, these are the questions that the film asks and it it follows. Originally I was looking at maybe doing an anthology, but now I'm, now I'm looking more at like, you know, picking one or two main characters to kind of ground the story with. And so that's exciting because I'm, I'm also pursuing like finding actual actors, which in over a decade of films we've never actually sought out real actors i don't know if anybody knows this but we've exclusively cast our <laughs> friends and family members in these films <laughs> so <laughs> what what are what are you talking about you have you have a list actor noah boink on this phone call right this is uh, right true. now this is true. why why would you why 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 would you even why would you even say that i mean <laughs> i he, i just can't believe that we have over a decade of movies under our belt and he's not even classifying us as real actors no listen, listen. i mean <laughs> noah just signed an exclusive deal with time warner Stu- like what like, what like what's going on right now why are you like this is this is this is crazy you know no, we gotta go no, we have to go on strike. I don't even want to be a part of this anymore. No, it just oh dove out. His oh my god, that... he just dove out his window head first. Oh my gosh, he's gone. <laughs> and this concludes. <laughs> I will not stand for this disrespect. As as you shouldn't, my friend. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, listeners. A a a quick a quick um bit of information that you may not know if if you aren't one of the uh small number of people that follows my my works online. Um, George and Noah have uh, been acting in my films and collaborating with me on my projects for literally so many years, like since middle school, since elementary school, uh, we've literally been making videos and movies together. So if you haven't checked those out, then I, I recommend you, you hit up that Keelan.com and take a look. Uh, but honestly, that is, that is a huge like tenant of our friendship is that we, we have bonded over the creation of all these different stories and we could talk literally, we could have our own, separate podcast just talking about all the characters and and uh like movies that we've made together it's it's really astounding and the growth that they've had as actors is ridiculous like you would think 
that they are real actors just because they've been put through 10 like grueling years of being forced to act in my movies <laughs> time and time again so so that, so you know even though neither of them are particularly in the entertainment profession they they do have you know they they uh what is it they they're worth their salt i guess is the expression they they know what they're talking about so yeah <laughs> That was quite. We the are idiom. worth salt to him. <laughs> that 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 was quite the idiom that you chose there. I'm just that, that's that's all that's all I'm saying. I mean, it means you know there's so many about. that you, you know could choose. About. No, 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 no. I hundred percent. No, I get it. I'm just saying. Like there were a lot of other things you could have said other than that particular <laughs> phrase. And I think that that's what's throwing me in no right now. Is that like I've never I, like I've never heard of anyone under the age of seventy five saying that. And, and now I mean I'm hearing it from you. Never heard this before in my life from you. We've been friends for. I'm, over listen, a I'm, I'm trying new things this out. Is, okay, I'm, this, <laughs> this is de- debuting. And this I, phrase. I believe the. Ex- <laughs> I believe the phrase is worth their weight in salt, not worth their salt. No, it's worth your weight in gold. Worth your weight in gold is the expression that you're thinking of. I think. Okay, then I've never I heard worth I, their I, salt. I was just watching so. a video. I heard somebody yeah. say this. Granted, it was an yeah. old man who said it, so George is not off, off base oh. with that. Oh. But maybe, oh, look at – wait, hold on. Wait, wait, no, no, no. Let's go back to but that. Maybe wait, my oh. podcast persona is an old man. Like, I don't know. Podcast <laughs> persona. We are only – we are genuine here. Like this is something that the this is something that the that the listener should <laughs> know. True. These are these 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 are these are all genuine takes by genuine human beings <laughs> who have who have experience consuming um, hundreds of hours of entertainment um, and 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 becoming true masters of the field. So um, so so yeah, you should, this is just something everyone should be aware. Of. All right, fellas. Well, I think we should dive into our first segment. I don't know about you. I think I think we've kept we've kept our listeners waiting. Yeah, I don't need to talk about my oh, life. Oh no, it's fine. Noah, Noah, how are Noah? How are you? <laughs> how are you, Noah? Tell us. Um, I <laughs> I am good. Um, uh, Abby and I are in the process of moving into a new house. Who is Abby for the listener? Abby is my girlfriend. We are we are moving with her three year old son. And uh, it's it's a lot more space, and it happens to be right next door to where we are currently living. So that really works. Yeah, out. that's awesome. <laughs> that's that's you won't have to rent a U-Haul for that one. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's awesome. You, you got you got the whole place. Yeah, it's it, we're yeah we're 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 renting it, so it's don't have enough money to make a down payment on a house right now. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey. Who does? Am I right, listeners? <laughs> in this economy? <laughs> the, eco- in this the economy e- is awful. <laughs> with the Fed with the Fed raising interest rates like this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> George, I just love your radio announcer voice. It's great. <laughs> All right, I'm ready to dive right in now. How about you fellas? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, something uh, something that we've always uh, enjoyed in our in our friendship dynamic is our ability to ask both incredibly random, funny, pointless questions, as well as incredibly deep and insightful questions. And so, we wanted to let you guys in on a little bit of that in our podcast. So, for the first segment here, this one's just a quick round of a uh, of just light, easy breezy questions uh, about Avatar. So, this could be about the original, about the new one, you know. Uh, just anything at all that's uh, you know on your mind, and we're gonna we're gonna um, just you know just pass the ball around here. So I'm gonna I'll kick us off. Uh, Noah, if you could be any bender, uh, as in like you know any one of the four elements you could bend, which would you pick? Right. Um, that is tough, but I've always felt really earthy. Earthy. If if you catch if if you catch me, you know, like yeah, yeah. I've always I. I've always been drawn to earth bending. You know, mm. being able to make my own house in a matter of seconds, that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> that would yeah. be that'd be fantastic. With all the appliances made entirely of stone. <laughs> it, exactly. And, and you, you know You don't even you don't even need a down payment at that point. I mean, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that uh yeah, that'd be uh that'd be my my pick. George, do you have a uh an element you would prefer to bend? Mm. Let's see here. Well, um, I would probably say air bending would be pretty sick. Mm. 
Uh, not saying that that is my personality in any kind of way, but uh, <laughs> I just think that it would be the the absolute most um, the absolute just most like technically challenging and probably most rewarding element to master. Mm. I'd say, like out of all of them, I'd I'd probably just uh, because I'm not exactly known to be the most laid back human being <laughs> on the planet. Earth. <laughs> not saying I'm not chill, but. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I I I I do I do have uh, I I do do a quite quite a lot of work. So uh, listener listener, a masseuse once told George that he had more tension than any client she had ever worked with. <laughs> True story. Uh, so 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 anyway, um, I'd probably say that air vending is the most um, it would probably be the most worthwhile thing for me. Fair answer. Fair answer. Should I? Should I? Uh, wait, how, wait, how about uh, how about Mr. Morris? Yeah. Well, I guess uh, I guess I'll jump in there. Uh, so I would I would uh, probably be a waterbender. I I haven't given it a ton of thought to be honest, but I think I think that water is like the one that I gravitate towards the most. Just like in nature, I enjoy water in all its forms, and not to be too cliche, but just like the the mentality of like constant like progression and like how how avatar describes it as the go or no how sorry how iro describes it as the go with come the flow. on what you've got to feel the flow you've got to feel the flow <laughs> exactly you know what i'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> like i think i don't know i think that in principle is really cool that like there's an element that inherently is like constantly moving and changing um i think that's cool so yeah oh i got i got a question for y'all Hit us with it, Noah. All right, I'll I'll have a I'll have Keelan answer first. All, All right. right, bring it on. If you had a day to prepare, what and you're a non bender. All right, if you had mm. a day to prepare, what elemental bender do you think you could last the longest against in a fight? An elemental bender that I could last against in a fight as a non bender. Um, with twenty four hours of preparation time, one day of prep time. Um. Probably Fire Lord Sozin, if I'm being honest. No, I'm just kidding. Um, let me think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hmm. God. Well, I'm trying to think which of the elements like you could maybe like squander the most easily with preparation. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess like if I had a day, I could just like try to like find and invest in like the greatest fire extinguisher that I can find. Like, <laughs> you know, forget, like... <laughs> for, forget, forget that man. Like, um, choose Earthbender. Um, get on a cruise ship <laughs> and just like, just like win. <laughs> Like what is he, what is he gonna what is he gonna, what is he gonna do? Unless, unless wait, hold on. Are they like are they crazy? Like like are these like master element benders? No, like, like, are, are, like are we talking like average Joe, average Earth like Earth bender? You know that you just like Haru or something. You know, perfect. Mm. I rent a plane, um, and we're going and we're going Earth bender, <laughs> and we just we're gonna circle in the air for <laughs> for for as long as we can, and then honestly, we'll all just fly away. That's a good. That's a good. That's another good. That's another good point. You know, you you invest in just a jetpack as soon as the battle begins with the Earthbender. You just like, <laughs> just like take off. <laughs> um, perfect. I mean, I I, I actually probably. Uh, that's hard. That's actually really hard. Because air can like I I want to say air because I feel like if I was like locked in a room. With, like an average Airbender, they might be the least dangerous like assuming the others have access to their element like a rock like an earthbender could just like crush me with a rock i feel like a firebender would just scorch me to death a waterbender i guess could freeze me um airbender i guess like well i guess though with an airbender they would just kind of knock you over a bunch of times or unless they're like literally going for the kill they could like asphyxiate you but i'm gonna assume the airbender because it's a pacifist will not try to asphyxiate me and i'm gonna go airbender you're just going to beat on a pacifist? That's crazy. <laughs> I'm going to ex- exploit their goodwill. <laughs> and that's our hot political take for the day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. All right, let me let me throw one more question out there for you. Um, well, actually, 
here, here's here's an easy one. George, favorite season of the original yep. show. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, oh my gosh! I mean, there's, I mean, they're all like, first of all, they're all high quality yeah. and like, like both, both in terms of like the like down to the very down to the studs. I'd say like every last detail. Oh, yeah. I'd say. The last one, I thought, not necessarily because it had all of the big fights, but to see how everything was resolved, I think, like, just seeing how, like, all of the all of the arcs kind of came to their end in such, like, an intricate way, yeah. I think that that probably was, was my favorite. And again, not just because those were, like, the biggest fight scenes or anything like that, but I'd probably say that, I mean, this, I mean, this was the kind of show that, like, like, season one was amazing. But um, like you could, but you could tell that it only got better with time. Yeah. Season two was season two yeah. was incredible. Season three was incredible, and it just it it's because it built on all of the, the 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 amazing like universe and like world building that 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 was going on. So I think season three had like the unique opportunity both to like benefit from all of that world building, and also for us to see both like the surprising and inevitable conclusion to everybody's story. And yeah. I think that it's um it's 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 really incredible yeah i might i might add that i i would say that three is definitely the most um like fulfilling and rewarding to watch because it is literally the culmination 100%. of everything and that's so that's so cool in, in shows and series where like like in harry potter for instance like when you watch deathly hollows it's not like you're just watching a standalone epic movie which it is but also it's you're watching like you've seen the characters grow up you've seen all of their growth up until then and that's when like it literally all pays off, which is super cool. And it, you know, but I, I would say personally, I think that season two might be my favorite season. If, 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 you know, aside from like three being so rewarding, like I think season two for me is like peak avatar. Like, I think it just, I don't know something about the storytelling, something about like, like some of my favorite episodes, like tales of bossing, say, you know, the library, uh, crossroads of destiny are in that one. And like, it's so in the middle of all the turmoil that you're getting like such good drama and um yeah i think i think two might take the cake for me but three is really close i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna have to agree with you there keelan like season like as george said all of the seasons are phenomenal you know but for me it really felt like the show hit its stride like it really felt like it had a like a set direction for the rest of the series once season two hit yeah you know like we, we got introduced to the next element that ang was going to learn to bend with with uh toph and earth bending mm-hmm. and we finally saw i i believe that's where we saw ozai for the first time yep and azula uh, well like we finally got introduced to the big bad of the show yeah and like um so to me that's that is why it is my favorite was because we finally got introduced to the next step. Like season one was just all traveling to the North pole, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. they, they, they practice some water bending on the way, but it didn't necessarily feel like a focal point. Right. 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 Of the season. Whereas in season two, they really started to focus on training him for Sozin's comet and getting those next elements in there to have him become a fully realized avatar in time for the final battle, which we saw in, in Sosin's comment. Yeah. 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 I'm with you there. And, and also like, you know, people talk so much about Zuko's character arc and like Zuko, obviously mm-hmm. again, the payoff, the payoff is in season three and God damn it. It is good. <laughs> like when, when he confronts yeah. Ozai, you know, when he's like, you're going to sit and listen and he, you know, he's like deconstructed all of the like imperialist stuff that he was force fed as a child. And he like, you know, totally like, Mm-hmm. goes to join ang like that is so rewarding but season two when you see him almost find his way and then lose it again like that is so right that's so rich and that's like you can't have the payoff without that without the stumbling and the falling and yeah it's so good it's so good but we could go on and talk about the original yeah. series forever so i say i say let's uh <laughs> let's let's get to the main meat of the episode <laughs> Um, Netflix's season one adaptation, which 
I remember got announced when I was in like when we were in like junior year of high school and mm-hmm. <laughs> and now that was what 2018 yeah something like that like we just we were just going off of a, a piece of concept art for like five years yeah. folks <laughs> and now it's here now we've they watched were taking it. their time yeah. <laughs> No, I was just saying it was like it's some James Cameron level like production speed. Yeah, like I'd say it's, it's, it's great. <laughs> no, for real, for real. <laughs> um, but folks, uh. this is this is this is the section of the podcast where we, you know, we forego the the question structure and we just we just talk openly about the day's uh, the day's topic, and that is Netflix's adaptation of season one of Avatar. So. Someone want to throw out some thoughts? Uh, just like what comes to mind right away. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, Keelan, you and I have actually talked about it at, like to to a certain amount. Yes. You know, the first few episodes, I think we got to like halfway through, but I have yet to hear anything yeah. that George felt about the series. Yep. So, George, I would love to hear what you have to say about it and what your reactions were. I feel, um, well, well, first of all, first of all, uh, like, I, I want to say, that and i've been saying this like a lot of and a, a lot of like shows and a lot of movies that have switched to live action have 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 had have had like this go in the past especially from major studios but the first thing like immediately that comes to mind that's unignorable is the fact that the visuals were stunning absolutely like the entire the entire time i was watching the, the entire time i was watching the show all i could think about was oh my god like they really they they really knocked this completely out of the park, mm-hmm. and yeah. I think that that's that's a, that's especially important um, for people who like who maybe haven't like or haven't seen the original because it it has been um, it like it, it's been it's been out for a while and I don't know how um, how how much in circulation it's been. I know it's incredibly culturally re- relevant, but I mean I got all of it. Like I I I watched Avatar um, on the TV um at least like the the small bits that i had uh that that i had seen before uh before watching it later um but i i I know that like now with everything going to streaming i don't know how many people this might be a lot of people's first impressions of the series and i'm glad that at least the visuals are complete in my mind completely like unimpeachable (laughs) yeah i'm with you there i'm with you there i think i think from a filmmaker's perspective like just the the lighting and the coloring of everything you know like even if this was just like a a drama that didn't even feature anything like fantastical like just the shots were objectively beautifully lit and beautifully colored and beautifully composed you know like everything just looked really good and i think that we 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 miss out on that in like modern day like both films and and uh series on streaming like sometimes like they just they just forego that like cinematic quality you know because they think that either the you know the the writing or the the comedy or the characters or the the iconicness of the ip will speak for itself and therefore they don't need to like put in that insane level of uh care into into the cinematography but the cinematography was stellar in this and um costume design was out of this world and the way that they brought bending to live action like that I think we can just talk about that for a minute because like bending looks so cool in the original series. Like it feels so yes. real and tangible, even in like 2d animation, like it feels so believable that this is how the elements move. And this is, it, it just, it's just such a cool like art form and power. And then like, you know, it exists in the comics, but of course it's just not as like visually uh, impressive. And it, and it exists like in um, another live action incarnation that, you know didn't quite nail it quite as well um <laughs> there was a an inaudible groan across this call just now um and uh <laughs> and so i think that they 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 knocked that out of the park they they killed the uh the depiction of bending like i think it all just looks so good yeah uh i 100 percent agree with both of you right there like that was the one thing that i actively said was my favorite part about the show Mm. you know it had a lot it had a lot to love it really did there were definitely some parts where i wanted to projectile vomit but uh (laughs) the 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 visuals and and the way the bending looked and how they look so accurate Mm. like that was just the 
the constant hitting it, you know, as I believe one of you said, out of the park. You know, it was just consistently amazing. I think we've each taken a turn saying that expression. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, look, I'm the baseball guy. It's okay for me to say it. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, no, ab- ab- absolutely. I mean, again, just it's something that I want to say that other networks are pro or other like platforms are probably more famous for like when I think of like absolutely excellent cinematography, I think of like HBO. I think mm-hmm. of like the recent show I've, I've seen like the recent shows on Apple TV yeah. plus. Um, I don't know if anybody actually has that network, but um, <laughs> I, I do know that like the, 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 the visuals that are coming out of those two studios. I know when I watch um, I, I know when I watch a product, from one of those two sh- from one of those two shows i know the cinematography is going to be excellent i know i'm going to know that like in terms of like the colors and i'm going i know in terms of the visual storytelling i will be engaged so it was very 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 nice to see netflix stepping up to the par of these like more visually at least iconic studios for that particular element of um of of of, of making a show like this so that was my very first impression my Second impression when when I watched it um, kind of ties back to the thing that I to, to, to what I briefly touched on before, which was my perception of the show was almost entirely based off of the original series. Yep. And yep. I I I don't I don't know exactly how to crit- how to how to critique or how to think about this in a way that doesn't um, doesn't have that in mind. And I know that um, I know that that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I wanted to acknowledge this limitation. The entire time I was watching the show in my mind, I was playing the original series in my head. Yeah, for sure. And I think that and I, I think that like that is a consequence of it being so iconic. But I wanted to acknowledge that before we go any further into this, because I mean, it's so it's 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 very important to note that like a lot of a lot of the critique and a lot of like the praise that has been um that's been like being felt right now in the entire fan base is from that perspective yes mm-hmm. so um i i know that all three of us have also seen the show so we so all of us um or like the original so all of us have that kind of ingrained idea of um this was a show based off of the original series and not a show on its own right um, so that's how I'm thinking about like everything else that I think that I'm going to say in this discussion. Right. And, uh, I mean, that's, that's what we, that's, that's all of us, you know, like we all are just basing yeah. it on the original series because that's what the show is based on, you know, like it, it, it's not like it's a, it's a brand new thing. And I think that's why a lot of fans were really, really upset with the way it turned out was because they were expecting it to be exactly like the original show. Right. You know, right. and when yeah. it, when it strayed from that, it uh, it it shook them a little a little too much, and they just hopped off that train real quick once they figured out that the storyline isn't exactly going to line up with every small detail. Yeah, yeah, I think I think uh, this is a very common point of discourse in a lot of different fandoms because you know if you look at like really really any any major franchise or any, any like story that's continually being adapted. Like if you look at star Wars, you know, every (laughs) new, (laughs) every new trilogy, every new trilogy, every new installment, frankly, like gets a ton of criticism for not aligning with the, uh, the values or the story or the aesthetic or whatever it may be of what this particular group of fans grew up with. Right. And so, you know, I, I think, and it's a fine line because like, I mean, like, generally, I think that it is okay to say, like, hey, like, we are disappointed in this new, uh, you know, this new installment, or, you know, like, a classic example is like, when a book gets adapted into a movie, it's like, hey, like, you changed all this stuff from the book, you know, and, and that's, that's a rightful reaction. Like, this is the story that we love, we feel like this is an important element of the story. And without it, it's not the same. And we're upset that, you know, this new, iteration uh you know left that out and that's that's super common um in like the comic book community you know i've bared witness to a ton of like 
hatred towards <laughs> any like any film that uh depicts comic book characters in a different light and that's like it, there's even a name for like they call it like comic book purists like the source material is their bible and they don't want they don't want a different version of that you know and i'm like listen it's okay like we can chill like there's like 15 batmans you know what i'm saying like take your pick you know but in <laughs> in this case you know especially because of the disappointment that so many fans felt after the last live action uh installment um of avatar like i think that people really had high hopes for this one to like bring it home so did they deliver that's that's the question i guess absolutely and um and I can jump in again um, on, on this one just just quickly because I know that uh, you guys like we, we we have not really talked about this um, like like at least with me present. Um, I would say that this show for me, well, at least in in statistics and in engineering, we have um, we have something called uh, standard deviation, mm. and it basically means how uh, how distributed. Um, a population is so like if if you're thinking about um, if you're thinking about like a number or like a score out of 10 something with a high standard deviation will mean that there will be like a lot of different points of view so mm-hmm. like if 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 you had a standard deviation of three then like immediately like there would be like a lot of a lot of controversy a lot of discourse and I think that this that there were parts of the new show which for me were an absolute 10 out of 10. Like I couldn't, um, like I couldn't have seen them like do certain scenes and certain, like even like entire like swaths of episodes. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have, I could not imagine them doing it any better. And to the point where like, I felt like I was in the same universe and a different universe at this, at at the same time. And, um, and I was absolutely Mm -hmm. loving it. There were also times where I was so incredibly <laughs> let down by yep. like the amount of um, by the amount of potential that something had and um, and and the in the amount of the, the amount of difference between uh, between what seemed like what seemed like potential and execution. Um, so, like one example of the of a scene that um, that I thought was done. Um, extremely well uh was um was the scene where um uh it was ang and uh zuko on the boat and they were asked and um and and he asked the question about uh if if they had been if 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 this had been like another reality or like a different life would they have been friends i thought that that was a it still gave me chills and like just how it did for the original Mm -hmm. show and I thought that that moment for me was 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 exceptional. What um, and, and something that really did let me down was definitely some of the portrayal of uh, of the spirit world. And that's that, <laughs> that's where world. I would oh. that's where I would kick it off. Yeah. So I, I know Noah has some exceptional thoughts about this. So I'll I'll, I'll kick it over to him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when it when it comes to the spirit world, I have been a huge proponent of uh, trying to keep it the same from what the original. Like that that's one thing that I will say is I am unwavering when it comes to my opinion on it, is that the the way that The Last Airbender, the original animated series, established it was the best one. It was so mystical. It wasn't necessarily fantasy or, like, bright colors or anything. Like, it wasn't uh, Legend of Korra. But... Okay. Um, okay. okay. I wish... <laughs> I, I wish... They what done... was he snuck he snuck that little <laughs> comment in there what did he do to... <laughs> i was not entirely upset with how they portrayed the spirit world how many people were able to get into the spirit world and the methods that they had i didn't necessarily agree with like when Sokka and katara both went in there and it wasn't because of hey bye that kind of threw me for a loop. And then they just never resolved Heibai's storyline. Mm. Uh, that kind of threw me off because I, I love Heibai. That's He's true. He's like my favorite spirit. We never saw Heibai turn back into the panda, did we? No. Huh. No, they never went back. Huh. <laughs> they... That's weird. Um, it 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 really it really seemed like it was more of a, a, a it was more of a side quest than yeah. something that was very integral to the story. 
And I think that I, I think that especially like later later on, I think we're going to see that maybe be a little bit more of a problem. Like if they like if assuming we get another season before 2029 um then like it, it, i would be i i i think that they're definitely going to have to they're definitely going to have to kind of boost up their portrayal of, of the spirit world in, some, in, yes. in in a lot of different ways because it like as as we all know it is it is definitely not a side quest part of the right. story it's um it's it's something that's that's pretty integral and i think that i mean like they they definitely made a choice not to not to go too far into it now and i think that they're gonna have to do it a lot more later <laughs> Right. And um with going going back to like the original Hey by episode, that was a lot like there was a lot of exposition there because of because of Roku. Roku's role in the original series in that episode when Fang came and got him, you know. Uh like he that's like where he, he we really got to see one, Roku mm-hmm. and two, just the spirit world in general and what it entailed. Yeah. You know? How how dangerous it could possibly be for spirits to come over if they are just royally pissed, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> and and George, going back to what you said about it feeling like a side quest, that is one thing that I kind of felt like every sort of every episode kind of felt like a side quest, you know. Aside from like episode one and like the two episodes that were in Omashu, everything else just kind of felt. I don't want to say rushed, but it didn't necessarily have the substance that it's, I understand it's hard to get when you're trying to mash a whole season into like four episodes or what, six episodes, but nothing really felt connected. You know, nothing felt like it had too much of a purpose on the story. And that's interesting. Am I I the only one that that felt that way? Well, that's interesting because, you know, I, I feel like, I feel like, a lot of the creative decisions were made at least from my perspective to avoid that very thing, (laughs) which is kind of ironic that that's a a major complaint of the show is because like, like why else would you consolidate so much into these different things? Like why else would you put all of these different characters from different episodes into Omashu or put all of these different spirits like Wan Chi Tong and the foxes and Ko and even the mother of spirits like, or mother of faces, yeah. sorry, like put all, and hey, by put all those into one spirit world episode. If you're not trying to make it more substantial and more impactful. Cause like, I feel that in adapting a 20 plus episode animated series into a, whatever it was, six, eight episode live action show like you obviously have to make some cuts you have to like you can't just have them hopping around to a different location every 10 minutes so to me it makes sense why they would do that um but i agree with your point that it it didn't necessarily i don't know if it necessarily had the desired effects because yeah the spirit world i don't know if it actually felt more substantial by including more spirits it almost just felt like i was actually just a little thrown off by the the inclusion of some of those characters and a little mm-hmm. concerned that maybe they were going to skip storylines down the road. Like, Oh, we're seeing Wan Chi Tong now. Like, does that mean we're not going to get to see the library later, you know, or like, you know, we're, we got, right. you know, we have these various characters in Omashu. Like, are they going to still have time for Boomy? Like, I think that as fans of the original show, and as you said, George, we're kind of playing the original in our minds as we're watching the new one. We're kind of wondering like, uh, does this make sense? Is this, are they going to really have time for everything? Like, and maybe, you know, I'd be really curious to ask like someone who hasn't seen the original, how did they feel about the pacing of this show? Like as its own right. thing, if someone watched it completely blank slate, like would they still have that complaint? I'm not sure. So. I mean, absolutely. Uh, that, that, I mean, that was like, that was one of the first things like while, like while I was watching the show, it was, it was, it was a, pretty unique phenomenon for me to be playing another show in my mind as I'm watching yeah. the show. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I think that it's, it, it is, it is, I think it's, it's literally just because it was so iconic and I couldn't, um, and I couldn't kind of separate them like in my head, mm-hmm. but I, I, I think that this actually zooming out a little bit is a real unanswered question um, for live action in general. Because we're seeing we're seeing this trend we're seeing this trend over um, 
over, over the past few years where a lot more um, books or animated or animated shows or animated movies are switching over to live action. And I think that this particular point of pacing and trying to um, of, 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 of balancing, keeping the pace right and portraying things in a way where you can do it in where, where you, you have to convert, like you have to convert a incredibly challenging, high pace animated, animated like work to a slower pace live action to make it, to make it even appear as if it's a connected thing, like at a, at, at a kind of base level. Yeah, right. I think that this is an unanswered question. I don't think that anybody has completely cracked this, this problem yet. And I think that as time goes on and as like this becomes more and more prevalent. And I think that it, again, it, it definitely has been over the past few years. I think that at that point, we're really going to see, um, we're really going to see this, this kind of transition um, almost from, from animation to live action, at least maybe like a secondary transition after the things have been made at the beginning. I think that that's when these kinds of things are going to truly be, be, at the same quality level or exceed maybe in some cases the original yeah and yeah. and to to go keelan to go back to what you were saying about like understanding that they had to like consolidate and george just also goes on with what you were just saying like i i don't want to come off like it's like i don't understand why they didn't do this or why they put those characters in i understand that uh it, it, i it's what 18 ish episodes i think for the first season and the way they consolidated it made sense it's to me, it was just like the first episode in Omashu because of how accustomed I am to watching the original series. When I think Omashu, I think introduced to Boomy. And when he didn't like play a part, that's what really threw me for a loop and like gave me whiplash almost. Right. You know, I was, <laughs> I was just so shocked that like, I was like, it's Omashu, but Boomy isn't here. Right. Right. Like that. That was the, the first time I watched that. That was one. That was the really the one and only time where I was like, "This doesn't make any sense. Why would you structure it that way?" Yeah, yeah. Like that's, yeah, that's. I, I agree. Like it was, it was strange to have the entire episode that's titled Omashu not show Boomy until the very end. It's like, it, it's almost right. like sometimes the titles were misleading. Like it made you think, like literally with the title Omashu, I'm like, oh we're getting like a really good lengthy uh, <laughs> recreation of the Omashu episode from the original, you know? And again, it's, it's right. that expectation of having seen the original and like, okay, like this is the boomy episode, you know? And, um, but for better or for worse, they, you know, they did have to make some changes and they had to approach it as its own thing. And as like, we are now creating, you know, this medium live action. We want like a, a point that I was thinking about was like, why would they take these characters um, like the, you know, the mechanic, uh, you know, from the Northern Air Temple and make them mm -hmm. in Omashu and have that be a two episode arc or even or three episode or whatever. And and I think it's because if they if they only, you know, if they only included them in these little side quests where like they're just hopping around place to place every episode, then you miss out on having a character that you can get attached to for a longer portion of the show. And I think that like for new viewers and for this particular medium, you want characters that you can actually get invested in. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if they succeeded in that regard. I'm not, I'm not like, I don't know if I felt any more attached to the mechanic or to right. some of these characters than I did in the original. Um, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but I, I, I do understand the thinking. Um, and so I think like to expect it to be structured exactly the same is, is unrealistic. Um, but right. it's still, it's still a fair thing. That that's what I was. Right. No, I know. Yeah, I know. I'm not yeah. trying to say like, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just saying to the, to the people who, who you mentioned, who might be criticizing it for not being a, you know, a play by play of the original. Like, I think that is a little unfair. Um, but we can still analyze it for what it is and for what, what it was able to achieve. Right. I mean, a hundred percent. Well, um, let's see. Okay. So, so going back to, I feel like the central, the central sort of point of this discussion uh, for us and just on the internet is the changes that were made. And 
like I was saying, like that is that is a fair thing to uh, to debate. And I think that in some cases, change change from the original source material can be very beneficial. Uh, sometimes a, a different interpretation of something can also be really cool. And and right. like taking a character and actually portraying them in a way that people don't expect. Like I think that uh, one thing that caught people off guard was Boomy being bitter towards Aang, you know, feeling like he'd right. been abandoned, feeling like Aang left him, like not just left the world, but like abandoned their friendship and, you know, all this stuff and, and how Boomy had to be left alone to like, you know, safeguard his kingdom. Like, I think that, uh, mm-hmm. I think that that take was cool. You know, it was different. It wasn't the Boomy that we're used to, but I think that was a cool interpretation. Um, I think that two, two characterizations that I struggled with in this one. Um, firstly, I think that Aang, honestly, he was portrayed in a way that I, that was different. And I, and I'm not sure that I prefer it. Like he was, he had a much heavier burden on him than in the original, like constantly, you know, he, he wasn't allowed to be a kid. Yeah. He, he wasn't, he wasn't a kid in the show. Yeah. Yeah. And I, or at least he didn't act like he was. Yeah. And like, Listen, I'm I'm a I'm a Zack Snyder fan. I'm I'm I enjoy a darker take on a character. Uh, <laughs> so don't get me wrong. I'm not gonna He's I'm not gonna say that like you can't have a more emotional version of a traditionally happier character. But it, it definitely did throw me off. It did throw me off that he that Ang Ang is is you know typically so joyous and yes he does have his very heavy moments like you know finding gyatso's skeleton you know finding that the fire nation had Mm -hmm. done all this destruction like you know to the forest and all that like he he has his moments of of you know carrying that that burden but it was you know the burden was so like heavy the whole and it was it was almost like the entire his entire character arc this season was just learning to not be so hard on himself to like the point where even at the very end of the finale, it was like, and you have to just like, you have to let this pressure go. Like it's the only way that you're going to do this. And that wasn't really a plot point in the original. So I thought it was, it was a bit much at times, but I don't know. It was an interesting take. Um, What do you guys think? Bouncing off of, or I guess adding on to what you were saying with Aang. um, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I, I said it before, but like, it didn't feel like he was able to be a kid like he was in the original season one. Yeah. You know, like when they went to uh, Kiyoshi Island, it was because he wanted to ride some giant fish. Right. Right. You know, not because it was a, like, I, I'll be honest. I can't remember why they went there, but the reasoning was for them to go there and, and the live action version. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I said, I think that he did always kind of have that undertone in the original series where he felt like he had that burden, especially in the beginning, mm-hmm. because they're like, why didn't you tell us you were the avatar, you know? And he's like, cause I never wanted to be, you know, right. like he, he feels that burden. He's just able to suppress it, I guess, more in the original series than he was in the live action adaptation, which I. I think to an extent it works well. I think they just hit on that just a little too hard. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I see what you're saying. That's a good way to put it. Like that he, he really is suppressing it in the original. Like, you know, he doesn't want to confront it and, you know, whereas like it's, it's very much the opposite in the live action where from the very first episode, he's literally monologuing about his grief, (laughs) you know, to Appa. Mm -hmm. Like, he's like, he's like, (laughs) I have such a burden. Like, this is not what I want. Like, this is terrible. And then he like, routinely kind of goes into that same monologue. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, no shade to to whoever wrote those monologues. Um, (laughs) But like, you know, as I was watching it with my roommate, like we kept pointing out, like, this is, he kind of already said that, didn't he? Like, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Like, like this is kind of this, he's kind of just like kind of going in circles here, which might be the intention, you know, it might be the, it might be the, um, like they, maybe they wanted him to be stuck. Like that, that's something he has to grow out of. I don't know. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I think that it, it was definitely a more serious show than, than the, than the mm-hmm. original. Um, and, and, and. Again, I'm not necessarily saying that that is a that that's a bad thing at all. It's definitely it's definitely a different tone. 
Um, I will say at times it was pretty difficult to watch um, when those particular moments were happening. Like when you were talking about the monologues, that immediately resonated with me because Mm -hmm. um, after there's, there's a lot to be said about like what should be said and what shouldn't be said in, in these, in these kinds of situations. And I just, I really, it was more difficult for me to see um, a child just jumping into this, like <laughs> to, 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 to a kind of, a kind of speech like he gave yep. in, in a way that wasn't just a little bit too scripted mm-hmm. for it to be, for yeah. it to feel entirely natural. If that yeah. makes sense. Like I couldn't, like especially like even even sometimes even sometimes like the types of language that were chosen even sometimes like the certain like the inflection that was placed on certain things i felt as if i was um i was more speaking to an adult than i would have ever imagined that i was in yeah. um or i was listening to an adult more than i more, more than i ever thought that i would be in this particular show. Yeah. I agree. I agree with your point about the the inflection and the and the the like the word choice. It 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 did feel a bit too scripted at times. Um and I think like we also have to remember like these are child actors, you know. And right. <laughs> like <laughs> and like, you know, if you think about the comparison I've been making when I have had this conversation with folks is like think about the first two Harry Potter films notoriously it's so (laughs) overacted you know it's so overacted right and and you just kind of embrace that like the kids are saying things like it's just it's it feels scripted but like they they grow into their roles and i think in this case like because we had the original as a point of reference again like you know the original is so much more seamless uh because of i think the nature of you know of an animated show like there's there's just not like that kind of issue um right no yeah i i i know what you're saying um with 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 animated shows you are you're able to get that emotion in the like in the face and i think that's where a lot of it lies mm. was like their their tone might have been okay like it, it might have been what they were looking for, but like their expressions while they were saying it, or like the passion that they were saying it at, yeah, just kind of felt a little too monotone, or like not exactly what we would have expected, mm-hmm. you know. Whereas in the animated show, they can make the they can make the characters do literally whatever they want, right, right. You know, <laughs> so it's a lot easier to show that to show that emotion and that passion with their body language and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think. I think that's just one of the shortcomings that you have when it comes to adapting from an animated show is that you can't necessarily get grab all that emotion the same way. Yeah. And I just don't think that they necessarily adapted that in the best way. And I really hope for the, like when they come out with season two and season three or sorry, book two and book three, right? they, they, they address that a little bit, make it feel a little bit more natural. Yeah. You know, I also just want to say like, like this complaint, like I, I have, I have this concern with, uh, with a lot of sci-fi and fantasy in general, that a lot of times they rely so much on the world building, um, or on the visuals that they, you know, the dialogue or the depth of the characters falls short. And so again, if we look at this objectively, like if this were just an original fantasy show that came out, I might actually say it has more character depth and more like engaging dialogue than just like an average fantasy production in a lot of fantasy, like for me and sci-fi, like, like it's just so concept driven and it's like, we have such a cool like world. They just don't care as much about, um, about like giving you believable characters and like emotional drama between them. Um, and again, like there's so many exceptions to that. I love fantasy and sci-fi. They're like literally my favorite genres, but I, I feel like some, some of them just fall short for me. And that's, that's usually why. So I would disagree <gasps> with your, with 
with you saying <laughs> that, that you felt like there was more character depth. I guess I'm, I'm because I'm such a fan of the original series. That's what I'm basing that character depth off of. Right. Where I mean, you brought it up before, where Aang's whole nature felt a lot more, and I'm I'm gonna use different words here. It felt a lot more closed off. Yeah. To everyone, you know, like how 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 do I say what what I mean here? Um, we didn't necessarily get to see a lot of his personality i feel or like how other than you know him being a kid in the avatar he was it was i'm just gonna i'm just gonna start re-saying stuff that we've already said it felt a lot more serious you know yeah. it didn't necessarily feel like I, there was that depth to him like that that conflict other than like i have such a big burden on me i see here's the thing though i I 100% agree that that prevented us from seeing a lot of the personality in the character, but it almost felt as if that was also just as real as I would expect from someone who had that kind of a burden from him. Like if I was like, I think if anybody was, was like holding the world on their shoulders, I don't know if I would be letting too much personality out if I'm being completely <laughs> honest. So like I, I think that I think that we can like hundred percent we can acknowledge this, but I I think a part of something and I think and maybe this might even be a, a philosophical point on on behalf of the production team, but a part of something being live action might be that there is a little bit more realism in like each individual character in and of themselves, not necessarily their underlying personality traits, but how they have to kind of project that towards the world. And maybe that's, maybe that's a philosophical choice. Maybe that is, maybe, maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's because of the actors. Maybe it's because of, um, maybe it's because of something that we haven't even considered yet. And that the production team has thought significantly more about it when they were in, inside of the, let, let, let's let, let's call it long production process and <laughs> um and 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 i i, I think that it, it might be that and it might be something else but um but but anyway i i this this is this is certainly a, a very valuable discussion yeah yeah and yeah. what one one other thing that i let now that i've kind of gathered my thoughts is another example of how i'm feeling is that they took out the romance be like the the, the right. feelings that ang had towards katara yeah you know that was a big part of his character especially early on in season one like he was just infatuated with her and for was sure. not afraid to show it for sure for sure and that was nowhere to be seen at least by me i didn't see any of that yeah with with the live action adaptation and i feel like that's where a lot of that character depth i feel was lost yeah because he he wasn't able to actually feel affectionate towards anything you know, which, like George said, it goes along with, you know, having the burden to save the entire freaking world. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I just feel like that was a, that was a big thing that couldn't necessarily be written out. Yeah. 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 And. Yeah, I think it, also, I think it, can I can I say one yeah, more yeah, thing? Yeah, go ahead. Of course. Uh, this is off topic. But when do we see Aang waterbend when he's not out of the Avatar state? Yeah, he never learned. He never learned in this season. I noticed that as well. Character depth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, no, I, I don't know. I don't know about that one. <laughs> yeah, they, they they did they did skip over the uh, plot point of like Katara teaching him, and he just kind of is like more of a natural, and she like has some envy over that. Like, like he didn't even learn. We didn't even see him learn yet. So that is interesting. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, my my point initially was not was not that, you know, necessarily that Aang is the most profoundly deep character in this, but just that, like, as a whole, it is, in keeping tradition with the original, with the original it is a character-driven story. Like, every character is on a quest, a right. personal, emotional quest of some kind. You know, uh, Aang, Katara, Sokka, especially Zuko, I thought that, I thought that Zuko um, was done excellently yes. we haven't even touched on him yet i thought that they they nailed his no. season one uh <laughs> arc really well and um you know and, and even even zhao like i thought zhao was done really well 
um, <laughs> Iroh. Iroh. Yeah. So okay. So this brings us to my next point. I was I was gonna say yes. the other character that was undeniably done differently was Uncle Iroh, um, and yeah. this is one where somehow with with how they did Iroh, they managed to do some scenes and some moments that I thought were incredible. And I was like, this is so good. Um, like, I'm glad that they added this. This is a, a worthy change. Um, but then on the flip side of that coin, there were also some moments where I was like, I don't understand why that change was made. Like, I don't see the value that it adds and I don't see, <laughs> I just don't like get it, you know? And, and my only explanation for that is maybe, Maybe they want Iroh to have an arc somewhat similar to Zuko where he actually like he actually has a he has he has like growth over the course of the show as opposed to like the original where he's already sort of arrived at his point of enlightenment like that that in this one maybe he grows and maybe he like faces the consequences of what he's done to a higher degree cuz like they really like I mean, they really got him on the the war crimes in this one. They're like, <laughs> they didn't, they did not shy away yeah. from that. Um, <laughs> they, they really got him on the war crimes. I mean, like literally, they did. <laughs> they really got him. <laughs> they really got Cause him. Because like, on cause the like in the original, crimes. it's like, yeah, we know he was a general who like did some bad stuff. But in this one, like the one Earthbender soldier straight up looked at him and, and was like, my brother like died because of you, and I still hear his screams at night. And then Iroh didn't apologize, didn't express remorse, <laughs> didn't, like, give the man some tea. And then said a line that makes no sense. Yeah. I, if, we, we, listeners, <laughs> if any of you can tell me what Iroh meant when he said, I wasn't talking about me. Like, what? who was he referencing? Who was he talking about? I did not get that line at all. I'm genuinely confused. The, the, the whole line was, uh, uh, war pushes people to the edge and so like and they don't like, like what War they find pushes there. people to yeah and they don't like what they find there and he's like i wasn't talking about me who was he talking about <laughs> yeah like is he talking about this earth kingdom soldier that he just met who just confessed that his brother died like Her... is he talking about <laughs> ozai or zuko like it didn't I, make sense i i thought maybe it was i thought maybe he was talking about like like the culture of the fire nation. Maybe he was talking about something bigger than himself. Um, maybe he was talking about something that, or maybe it was maybe exposition for like a scene that may, that we would see in the future, but regardless, re whatever it was, it was very unclear. <laughs> and, um, and, and I, 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 I will admit I was very, I was very confused as yeah. well. And it's, and that, that very episode had me scratching my head because that scene perplexed me so much but then that same episode had some of my favorite iro scenes like the lieutenant yes. funeral the lieutenant funeral was was a great addition um and zuko sitting next to him in the chair that was good yeah and then at the end like when he says the line that's like it seems we are always getting on and off of boats prince zuko perhaps that is our lot in life <laughs> like i just thought that was so good like that was so good i don't know yeah like, that was just uh, that was that was that was perfect his I mean, his monologue as well, um, like at mm. the end, at the end of one of the episodes. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, 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 I got to say, like, regardless of anything that has ever that that is that has been said about stuff, this that, I mean, it is clear that this show, um, despite its 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 highs and its flaws, can give anybody chills. I mean, that was that, that was seriously some of um, some of the best television that I've seen um, that I've seen in, in, in 2024 at least yeah. uh probably uh for, 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 probably in, in in the last few years as well i mean that was that was really yeah. something can we talk about real quick how we thought momo was going to die for a second in the finale oh my yeah, god yeah i don't know what that was i don't know what that was i'm going to be honest i mean like they really kind of pulled at the heartstrings out of nowhere and like that, that was, like that i was, was aghast. that was uncalled for <laughs> i was i was so shocked i was like is this going to be like the change that just sends everyone over the edge into like riots in the streets. <laughs> like, <laughs> like if they just killed Momo, they would just be like declaring war on the fandom. I feel like, <laughs> dude, that was, that would have been crazy. That would have been crazy. 
can't believe and then and and then the 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 cabbage man like i i I have no better way to say this but blue ballsing us with the the phrase my cabbages he gets to say it like three times and never finishes it until the very end of the episode i mean but at least he said it like it like it built up and he did say it so like yeah (laughs) the I I I'll 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 say this the suspense um I don't know if it really I I I don't know if it added much to my general experience <laughs> but in the moment it I I I I in the moment I thought that it was I thought it was new I thought it was different and I couldn't I couldn't really fault it <laughs> I I know they were just pulling a prank on the audience there cuz everyone knows like for some reason everyone just loves well not for some reason he's awesome but everyone loves the cabbage man and everyone yeah, was just great. waiting for him to say it Yeah you know and then they were like, you know what we're going to do? <laughs> you, know what, you know what I think would be hilarious? <laughs> would be for him to start saying it tw- two or three times and not finish it. Yeah. Also, wait, quick thing I just remembered. It's it's funny that they used uh, Pippin Patalopsicopolis in a different context than in the original. Don't even get me started. <laughs> <laughs> listener noah just like Her- dove backwards bounced <laughs> off of a trampoline that's evidently off screen and then came back on with a fiery passion <laughs> what is going on <laughs> uh i <laughs> i was i was glad that they incorporated it i was but her name is mrs pretty all right no one can mm. tell me otherwise that's true that's true you're right you're right <laughs> all righty everybody um and this this particular episode since we've got a little bit over time uh we are going to have our second question round our, our second question speed round yep. <laughs> uh which is actually going to include one question we're all gonna we're all it's gonna be deeply profound and we're all gonna answer it and then we are going to uh we're gonna say a little goodbye to you guys and um uh, and, and we're gonna and we're gonna leave it uh for the next episode. All right, all right. So, uh, to kick us off, and uh, our our deep question of the day, in general, these might be a little bit longer, but this time is just going to be one question. Uh, I will, uh, I'll say this. Zuko, in, 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 in both, in both uh, adaptations of, uh, in both the original and the new adaptation, uh, has his iconic scar on mm. his face. Now, I would li- I would like to ask the group, if, you had to have a scar representing your journey. Ooh. What and where would it wow. be? Wow. That's a good one. That's a good one, George. That is a that's a great question. Yeah. One that I can't Thank say you. I've Thank ever you. thought about. <laughs> that's Thank you. Thank you. Wow. I I I we we had deep in there and I yeah. and I went for that's it. That's good. That's good. <sighs> Kaylin, do you have an answer cuz I might need a second. <laughs> hmm. And I don't, I don't want to, I have an answer, but I don't want to jump in uh, because I think that that would, that would kind of, that would influence your answers. And I don't want to, I, I want you guys to take it, uh, take it into the, the way that you think, uh, the way that you think the question should be answered. All right. Okay. So, it's, so uh, to, a quick clarifying question. Would it be another burn scar or would like, would it just be like whatever, whatever you, it, it's what and where. Mm. So you, you have a lot, you have a lot of freedom here. Okay. And um, I think that I, I mean scar, and, and as as my compatriots are thinking, I'll just I'll, I, I can say that I mean scars on television characters have been have been some of the most um, have, have have been some of the most I, I want to say complex elements of visual storytelling if done in a, in the appropriate way. Yeah, um, I think that uh, I, I I think that the fact that Zuko only has one scar really tell really tells them something. I just think that its placement also really says something i think that um like in, in in situations like this it can really be defining to the character and to the archetype that um that that this that, that, that the characters kind of fit into so i'd like to um like this this is the idea behind the question and i'd like to kick it off uh, if somebody has their answer i believe i have my answer all right absolutely not. i am gonna go you know i'm just gonna you know burn scar you know like if i'm in the world of avatar burn scar i would say on my shoulder Mm. because it's not necessarily something that i just want out in the open 
You know, like I don't want it necessarily stamped on my face. You know, where th- that's the first impression people get of me is that I just have this traumatic injury just right there on my face. Right. It's something that I can conceal most of the time. You know, and if like it, it keeps it to where it feels a little bit more personal to me. You know, yeah. like it, it's my journey. You know, I get to tell who I want about it when I feel comfortable with them. You know, and it's not necessarily in a place where it's hard to show. If I do want to show it, you know, I just roll up my sleeve and it's like right here. So I just pulled out my arm for those that are, you know, that, that can't see me. <laughs> But, (laughs) but I think it would like, for me, that'd be my ideal placement purely because it's something that I could both maintain it being a personal aspect of my journey, but also have it easy enough to, to show those that I'm comfortable with and explain, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I, I think like, um, like to George's point about how scars can represent different things for different characters, like Zuko, it is a, it is a mark of shame. It is very public. Um, and so defining to him that he thought that it defined him. Then it turned out like ultimately it didn't. I like the idea of a, a more concealed scar. Like that makes me think of Batman. Like Batman has, like, he's like riddled with scars, but nobody ever sees it. And that's, that's cool. Cause that's like, you, you, you see his vulnerability when he takes off the suit, when he's his real self. Like, I think that's cool. Um, well, the first thing that came to mind for me was eyes, but I don't know if I want eye scars. <laughs> uh, this listener, I've had I've had an eye condition for several years that's quite dramatically shaped the course of my personal journey in life, and so uh, that that. But yeah, no, I don't think I want scars on or around my eyeballs. I think like it might be cool as a character <laughs> feature, but not in real life. Um, no, 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 no offense or shame to anybody who does have eyeball scars like that. You know, that's, that's your story. Um, but I would maybe want something also that's like something that I can, you know what, actually, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm drawn to, I'm drawn to like arm or hand for some reason, as long as it's not like an especially like painful or inhibiting scar, because then it's something that like is still visible. Um, and so people do know, like at, at a first glance that I've like lived something tumultuous that there is a story there um you know but and also like for me like if i were to get a tattoo it would probably be on the arm because i feel like the arms i use for my art making for creating like i feel like it's it's a very like it's it's the part of my body that i use to actively engage in life um so i might i might do something on the arm that that symbolizes my journey yeah what about you george I I was going to say hands, mm. and the and the and the re, and the reason that I and the reason that I chose this was because as somebody who's fairly analytical, who's like an engineer, who's definitely studying <laughs> all of the like like all of the kinds of elements of and 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 theory behind building things, um, oftentimes a lot of um, a lot of times like at least in terms of self worth has been placed in the things that I am capable of creating. Mm, and yeah, um, sure. a lot and a lot of and a lot of the personal journey um, has been kind of decoupling uh, like self-worth versus what you can put out into the world. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So I I I'd say I'd say probably hands hands. And also like you could you could you'd be really cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> you, could, you, could, you could have it in like you could you could have it in like a little pattern like a lightning bolt like harry potter yeah and then you could and then if you have it like smack dab on like the palm then it would be like whoa you're, you're cool you have like a lightning scar yeah and then <laughs> <laughs> and then and then you know it's it's, it's something and, you know there's you know those little like oh my gosh those circles where like everybody sits around in a circle and they go and, and 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 they're like, all right, everybody, tell me a unique thing about yourself. Mm. And then you know, you know how this is always like a thing in school yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. I mean, like, I mean, how many times or how many times has somebody been around that circle and just been like lightning sky and then like <laughs> held up their arm? And then like, I feel like that's such a win in that category <laughs> that it's 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 dual purpose. But, um, but I, I, mean, I wasn't a... <laughs> I wasn't aware we could choose the shape of our scar. 
I, oh, absolutely. That changes I mean, that's... my answer dramatically. I'm going to have a no. giant Lightning McQueen <laughs> on my forehead. Okay, no, I, I don't mean pictographically. <laughs> all right, this is not. This isn't. This isn't. This so isn't, mine can be uh, in, in like the shape of, of the state of Texas, is what you're telling me. Like I can make. It. Oh, okay, Ab- <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Also, what are you talking about, Texas? All right, I was anyway. born in Texas, um, George. No. Get out of here! <laughs> yeah, is that is that part of okay? No, actually, well, um, true story, <laughs> little known fact. No, I, I know. <laughs> I knew that fact. <laughs> Did you really? I'm your real friend you here. I didn't know you knew. This. Yeah. yeah. I knew that. <laughs> oh, okay. You you would you would talk you would talk with uh, with Grace about that at the at the, at the lunch. Oh, day, that's right. Recall. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. True, true, true. <laughs> and I know your dad <laughs> is from Arkansas. I mean, yes, that is that is also true. <laughs> good point, Noah. Good point. Um, regardless, I'd like to th- I'd like to thank everybody for for for, for listening today. Um, we, uh, we 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 don't have a guest, so I, I hope I hope you enjoyed all three of us having an absolutely wonderful off the cuff discussion. Um, and uh, it's 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 been absolutely wonderful to uh, to, to to do this for the actual very first time so um, i just i i <laughs> we wanted to we wanted to, we wanted to say thank you we wanted to say uh thank you thank you uh both for listening and uh for uh for for your continued attention hopefully during the entire segment <laughs> and um <laughs> and uh i'd like to uh, i'd like to thank uh to, to thank my other my, my other podcast uh hosts uh, for being here tonight and um i'd like to just say uh to say goodbye to you guys as we all prepare to sign off and are uh, you gonna thank our sponsors real quick vero true social maybe yes and uh no. yes. Our, our our sponsors just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay i was i was gonna say cam productions oh yes cam productions of course <laughs> self-sponsored because that can that's di- <laughs> yeah <laughs> well i figure if we're gonna run the ad it might as well be for us true true um <laughs> check out our latest film <laughs> tales across the keelan verse available now on keelan the storytellers youtube um no listener thank you <laughs> thank you for uh your time and attention to our again our very first episode we apologize for any hiccups this yeah literally was our first time ever hopping on the mic and doing one of these um and and for the hurried nature of our of our last segment there because we went a little over time um but this was a great time and uh, hope you enjoyed yourself. So we will see you on the next episode of let's all say it at the same time. The everything the club, everything, the everything club. club. I said it twice. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> wow. Wow. Was that something? Oh, <laughs>